Hello and welcome back. Standard Super League. We, we are ready for match number two. Now, I got to ask you, Brad, are, are you team Ambush Viper or are you team Marsh Hulk? I, I, this is over my head. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, see, my problem is, like every player who started playing back in the 90s, I tried to make poison work. So I feel like I'm team Marsh Viper and I'm just torn. I don't know whether <laughs> I'm supposed to root for Marshall or Gabby here. Oh, we're talking about that match. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I'll never root for Marshall, so whoever he, he or, he's playing against, that that's who I'm rooting for. So. What what's the bad <laughs> blood with Marshall? I didn't know. Oh, there's was... there's no bad blood. It's just you pick a side, right? Like. <laughs> I like it. So yeah, yeah Ambush Viper is uh, Gabby Sparks's chosen avatar for her spirit animal or some such. <laughs> Sounds like you're on Team Gabby here. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm 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 also on Team Brad, but I, I don't like my chances this time around. The well, the decks that play, you don't have to play either of them for a little while. You're in you're in the group of death, yeah. so which which is very deadly for me. <laughs> it's insane. You're the one with the number five in front of your name, though. Like you, they should be just I, as scared of you, right? Oh, oh right, right. Oh, right. There. Oh, I see it. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, the number. Well, wow, that's actually that's my number now. That that is really high. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind that one. I, I broke the single digits. I didn't even know that. Last pro tour. Where'd you finish? Yeah. Uh, I scooped uh, Nathan Holiday into platinum and finished X five. Right. So I mean, even X five is still ten points, right? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. At that point, it was just icing. Like I, I needed. I didn't even know what I needed for uh, for worlds, but I assumed that just placing with extra points would get me there. Yeah. So once I got to the point where ten six was my worst record. Uh, a lot of pressure was off. So I did want my top 16, right? Because, like, Shouta did, you know, just make Call of Fame with a ton of top 16. So, like, I sat down and I, I really wanted it. and But I'm not, I'm not going to dream crush someone out of platinum. So yeah. Makes you sense. Know. And you, do, you will be playing Worlds in a couple of weeks. That's got to be yeah. exciting. Have it, you not it played is, one of the new Worlds as yet? I have not. See, I won Player of the Year, and then the year after that, when I did terrible, that's when they made Worlds a thing. Right. Like Owen got in uh, the next year off of Player of the Year. And ever since, I've been sitting at Silver and trying to grind Magic and then finally hit Gold last year. And then finally, this is the year that I'm at Worlds. And I'm excited. I just hope that uh, uh, I get a crack at testing Modern Masters. Because if I don't, then <laughs> that is that is not three pro points for me. <laughs> got it. You uh, didn't play a lot of Modern Masters, didn't go to Vegas, right? Uh, no, I didn't go to Vegas, and I drafted twice online, and one time I 3-0'd with like a red deck slashing black. That was insane. And then the second draft made me realize that I had no idea what I was doing, and <laughs> there was like 12 different synergies and a schizophrenic deck. Like, the the format's really complex, and once you know it, I think you know it, but uh, I have no idea yet. Got it. But I feel confident in Origins. Standard, I've got, I've got a couple things uh, brewing. Uh, Couple nice. things that the the team isn't really, uh, you know, it hasn't piqued their interest yet. Uh, but and then modern, I have no idea. How many teammates do you have going to worlds? Uh, well, that's just information I don't want to, you know, let anyone know in case there's some worlds opponents in here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I meant how many of the people you teamed with for the pro tour are qualified? Uh, three. That's a nice number. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. We. Uh, we have four in in the tournament, which is awesome, and uh, it's really cool to work with a group of people that I get to work with on a weekly basis for this tournament, as opposed to not having any resources like a couple people will. So uh, I'm I'm really excited about the tournament. Like I've always wanted to play in it, and it was kind of a dream of mine. And I didn't know that there was going to be too many more like dreams I really needed to accomplish in Magic. Um, but playing in Worlds every year, I watch every single minute of coverage, and sometimes I even watch the replays. Like, I was really excited uh, to qualify this year, and hopefully, I don't embarrass myself because it's a uh, it's a lot of competition. Now you got a trip scheduled before then, right? Aren't you off to London like literally mm -hmm. tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow morning I'm off to London, and uh, Star City Games is hosting the tournament, and they're doing a versus video seminar. So Chris Van Meter, Brian Brown, Dewan, Todd Anderson, Tom Ross, and I are going to be spending about two hours with anyone that wants to sit there and listen to us talk about standard and probably ban heroic um, <laughs> and, and, you know, green devotion. 
but uh, outside of that, uh, we'll be doing a meet and greet and stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Like, uh, I love that Star City gave us the opportunity to go over there and meet a lot of the fans. Also, we have shiny tokens. So, like, that's – like, right when they brought the idea of it to me, I was like, well, we get some of those tokens, right? <laughs> like, not just not just the people that sign up. Like, we get to take some home. So uh, they said yes. And <laughs> cool. But, yeah, it's going to be a fun tournament. Awesome. Well, meanwhile, we are now getting ready for Marshall Sutcliffe versus Gabby Sparks. We're probably about two minutes away from playing this game. I don't know if you've had a chance to check out the deck lists. Uh, Gabby has brought a Goblins deck to the table. Have you seen our mm-hmm. list? Uh, I have not. I, I, I mostly focused on how horrific my match against Sam was. <laughs> but uh, okay. Goblins is a pretty interesting one. As long as uh, Marsh Hulk doesn't have any languish, then then we should be good, right? Yeah, he, uh, I think he, I sounded like Marshall was doing a little bit of scouting too. He had Gabby on Obs on Aggro because that's what she's been playing on stream. That's what she's been playing. I guess she went to Star City Chicago. Um, but yeah, she's mixed it up a little bit. I didn't know she was going to be on Goblins here, but there you go. The Glory Chasers, obviously the new addition to the deck. It's a pretty solid one drop, I would think. Yeah, I love the the combo of Subterranean Scout and Obelisk of Erd. Um, <laughs> we actually tested this deck a lot and uh, there's a couple Nambos in the deck, but if if it's unmolested, it just dominates the game. And you, you just need like three or four turns of them not mass removing uh, your board, and then you just win. Uh, it, it is a very powerful deck, especially on the play. And I feel like this is the deck people were expecting to come out of red out of Origins because of Goblin Pile Driver, which still works with a subterranean scout even through Obelisk of right? No, because it already has three power before uh, once Obelisk is in play. It has too much power for the scout. Oh, Obelisk is plus two, plus two. I think it is plus one, plus yeah. two, of course. Eh, either one of them's good, right? Play the scout first. Tap it for the arrow. Marshall looks good. <laughs> Marshall, meanwhile, Esper Dragon. Relatively, uh, I don't know, vanilla version of the archetype, I guess. He does have two copies of Languish and then one Crux of Fate. What he does not have are Drown and Zaros. Uh, any Bio Blights? Uh, let's see. Main deck had two Bio two. Blights. Two Foul Tongue, two Price, three Downfall is the removal suite. Oh, wow. And, only three Downfall. Yeah, and I only, there's two Drowns in the sideboard, along with a Farika's Cure and Languish number three. Okay, wow. Yeah, um, like the Languishes are going to be super important. Not having Drown is is a little scary, but... When the obelisk happens, uh, there's an opportunity to drown and then just pick off all the rest of the spells that goblins will have. Uh, but I've been actually testing a little bit of Esper Dragons, and the problem I've had with it is it still just has a lot of these like clunky draws, um, and it feels like a Delver deck that needs like four turns of setup as opposed to just one. Um, but uh, if it has the correct cards for the matchup, it can win. And as you see, we have a Bio Blight. Wow. Yeah, that Bile Blight's definitely a card he wants to see in his opening hand, right? I mean, he basically kept Ashiok Bile Blight in five lands. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the draw. Uh, fully committed to the uh, anti obzon Agro, even though he should know the matchup already. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can't really mulligan many things. Also, not having a white source means that any top deck Ojutai isn't going to be able to like stabilize on the board. How's Gabby's draw? Uh, Gabby's draws look fine. I, I can't tell what that card is. Is that a... What is, is that a scout? I think that's a pile driver. That's a pile driver. Okay, what what pile driver is that? Is that the new pile driver? I, see, I only know the onslaught pile driver. That's when I started playing magic. Yeah, that's just a weird, I've never seen that one. Yeah. Maybe that's a promo of some sort. Yeah, I never know promos. Um, but yeah, this, this draw is great. Bioblade's going to end up uh, taking out the pile driver. Uh, Gabby's going to have to be concerned about Languish, not wanting to get blown out here, uh, but I think she has to put another creature on the board, which is probably probably the Scout, just because it deals more damage, and if you're investing a creature into a board, you might just not care if it gets Languished. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, she's going to have to be careful of mass removal, but uh, as we can see, Marshall doesn't have any, and yeah. She has drawn a lot of lands, and she will have to take a turn off to even play that obelisk, so that might become a very late-game play. But this this draw from Marshall looks extremely anemic, and uh, <laughs> he has, like, one turn of interaction. 
So we'll see uh, if she just fully commits to the board. It seems like it's the right play to just commit. I mean, Marshall's only got, she sees the list. He's only got three sweepers. And one of them is a five-mana sweeper. Well, I mean, I've seen Gabby play, and she, she thinks through a lot of her decisions. And one of the decisions she has to make right now is Marshall kept this hand. Like, he didn't mulligan. Like, this probably means he probably has something, not just a bile blade. Uh, and okay. neither creature got countered, so she'll see the bile blade now because I don't think Marshall wants to take this amount of damage with Ashiok as his follow-up. And then next turn, she'll be able to tap two of her gob leftover goblins, play the obelisk, still hit for four, and put uh, Marshall on a one-turn clock. So Dig Through Time's not going to get him on this. He's just going to have to draw. Uh, I mean, I guess Oju Time might be able to stabilize if he draws on two turns, but he might just need one of the languishes. I guess a Bile Blade does help. Helps? It doesn't, there's no two-for-one available to them, though. I mean, getting the goblins off the board is going to be important after next turn with the obelisk coming down. Yeah, and she's a little flooded, right? She yeah. doesn't really want to draw five mountains. I mean, here I, I'm pretty sure she has to just commit to this obelisk and let it get countered because it's not really going to help later. No language happened. Sure. Language so, would have happened if Marshall had drawn one. Yeah, okay, so she's just not going to play into Dissolve. Which, which is good. Um, this is like one of those turns where you don't want to turn on the bad spells in your Esper Dragon's opponent's hand because if you turn them on, then that ha that makes Dig Through Time a possibility through a Polluted Delta next turn. And she wouldn't get any damage in, so she just wants to keep dealing damage. Not using the Bile Blade is interesting. I guess he just there's no way he's going to beat... Uh, all right, so I'm just thinking. There's no way he uh, he was going to beat an outburst without holding the bi the bio blade. But uh, Ashak ticks up. I don't know what uh, he hit, but if she stokes to the face, uh, she's threatening almost lethal here, um, except for a counter spell. And she'll only have to tap one goblin to um, cast the obelisk. So I think that's the aggressive line she's going to take. Yeah, Marshall no longer threatening Dissolve, so she can stoke. And yeah, no interest in Ashiok. Ashiok yeah, can do his thing. Take face damage. So this is an interesting one. Uh, she can choose, like, without Bioblight last turn, she has to think that he doesn't have a spot removal. And if, if she decides that he doesn't, she might just uh, slam the, the Obelisk here. Uh, or not Obelisk, the Goblin Rabble Master, because that's better to get countered than the Obelisk, probably. But I guess it's a good follow-up. I mean, it's weird, because your opponent hasn't really done anything, so I don't really know the thought process I would be having in this situation. I would I would put my opponent on having some interaction uh, with this Obelisk. Oh, wow, kept a mount. Oh, this is to play around uh, a score. That's smart. <laughs> so I usually just jam into score. You pay for it. Yeah. All right, I so like this, this is big trouble for Marshall. The obelisk is in play. Uh, this means that every single goblin that uh, she draws isn't just a 1-1. One -one. It, it is a lethal threat. I like Tabby's line there. I mean, it seems like Solomgar Sporn is one of the few cards Marshall could have there. He wouldn't really have had a chance to play it, so... Yeah, and no white source means that... I mean, no white source could mean that your opponent has a dragon in hand, too. Oh, wow, the creature was a goblin rabble master. That's... Oh, jeez. Yeah. I have seen Ashiok rabble masters kill very quickly, just because you're the deck with all these removal spells. Uh-huh. Uh, but at the same time, those are three threes in play, and it's going to be a tough race, especially since... Uh, until the Rabble Master's off the board, those are stupid goblins that always attack even though they want to block. And so until he chump blocks with the Rabble Master, which he can't with the Frenzy Goblin in play, uh, she's not going to have to worry about her life total in any way for uh, at least three turns because uh, I've, I've learned the Rabble Master math and it's just uh, 168 dead. And <laughs> so you have to, dead? yeah, you have to eventually interact with it. So Rabble's in play. Uh, Gabby's thinking if she wants to play the Frenzy Goblin. And I think you do, because that extra point is actually lethal. Um, or at least forces the Rabble Master to block. 
Meanwhile, uh, Marshall's going to use his Bile Blight to take care of Rabble Master before Gaddy can attack, right? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a 4 4. It doesn't even kill it. Yeah, it does. All right, so we're still in main phase. Yeah, she was going to wait, and now she probably is going to play this Frenzied, forcing the Goblin Rabble Master to block. Because right now she has. No, I guess it'll become a 5. Because it's 3 4 5, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Rabble Master token comes into play. Bile blighting the frenzied. I guess he really does want to block here. What's he? What else could he kill? I guess yeah. It, this, it's a forced chump block anyway because he didn't kill the rabble master. He can't um, kill the rabble master. Oh yeah. What it's am I thinking? Forced. And it'll kill his because it's a bile blade. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I haven't commentated in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Obelisk of Bird does doing some work here for sure. Marshall down to five. Rabble Master, his Rabble Master is dead. Ashiok is kind of a spectator. This is definitely not the matchup where you want your Ashioks. Yeah, and right now, uh, I mean, this is just going to boil down to uh, Languish or Bust. Because of the fetch lens, we do have a draw. No, we, we, yeah, we, no, we do not have a draw to, uh, to dig Languish um, since the Ashioks going to still be in play. So uh, <laughs> maybe he was supposed to play a fetch lens there. Uh, so a dig isn't out. Dots is definitely isn't out. Yeah, that is not the draw phase he wanted. Draw. This is how always what happens when I play this deck. Like I just get into <laughs> a bad board position, and all of my cards are so situational that I mean, you either just win so far ahead with an Ojutai. It's like the opposite of uh, like the testing of control. Like you know, like the the theory that like people play control because when they're testing or when they're ahead, they get to be ahead for so long that they feel uh -huh. good about it. Yeah. Uh, and losing doesn't matter because you lose right away. But like, that's not this deck. This deck kills so quickly yeah. and then tries to stay alive for so long and never gets there. Like it's Ugin or bust yeah, in those board Yeah, he gets a hand to see if he gets any, I mean, I guess he gets a little bit of information about how she has chosen I mean, to play out this game. Yeah. That's about it, because he does have deckless. But, I mean, Marshall loves his value. He's played, <laughs> I think he's played a little too much limited in his life. He's, he's a never concede guy, too. Okay. I joined that school for a little bit, but it's... I, I'll never concede in a situation where my opponent's decisions matter. Yeah. But, like, she actually just has Goblin <laughs> Rabble Master in play. She can't make any more decisions. She could have chosen to attack Ashiok. That is a thing. Oh, that is, that is true. She could have misclicked. <laughs> she attacks Ashiok, but the game's not actually over. But yeah, Gabby wins game one, and uh, we get to go to sideboarding. Now, the sideboarding, what happens in sideboarding? It seems like Marshall's deck is the one that gets significantly upgraded here, right? All right, are we going to take a look at that, or should I go pull that up? I think um, we can... Yeah, we'll give okay. it a couple seconds to get our hand camps work. Seems like all of our technical issues are now gone. We're able to get everything on the screen, so we'll take this opportunity to set things up. I mean, I did tell you that once I'm on camera, everything's going to work because I'm just so yes, lucky. Yes, you told me. You're lucky. <laughs> You're inherently lucky, so all this will probably go away. I all right, well, that. she will not be boarding. <laughs> no, none of those cards look relevant. What is yeah, I mean, Hill Cutter is... Uh, yeah, Hillcutter's an instant speed uh, way to keep from languishes, but uh, Marshall's going to be the one that's going to be sideboarding here. So uh, Ashiok and Ugin are going to have to go. Um, Thotsies is actually pretty good against Goblins because they, they don't have a ton of reach, whereas like cards like Dissolve and Hero's Downfall tend to be uh, far too expensive. And F Foul Tongue is like this weird card that you want to play, but like it's embarrassing to to all these cards. So... I mean, he does have two drowns and a languish. Um, Tazigur will probably come in. The cure will come in. Uh, all patient. the dragons are probably coming in. Pretty massive sideboard then. What are you taking out? Uh, you're taking out your Ashiok, your Ugin, uh, your downfalls, maybe some of your foul tongues. Um, no, like Thoughtseize... Thoughtseize is bad against like the other versions of red with all the burn, but this is a version where you can take one of the most powerful synergistic cards out of a goblin's hand and leave them with a bad draw. So I actually don't think that uh, Thoughtseize is that bad in the matchup. Maybe you don't want all of them, but I don't mind drawing one. Is that Jace in from yeah. the sideboard? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have cards to interact with your opponent uh, and you don't want like the expensive ones, at least Jace is going to be able to flip... It works really with language. She doesn't have a lot of the fast removal spells 
And this is a particularly slow draw, but I would have kept it at the same time. Um, but yeah, Jace on the play can be pretty good since this isn't the, the normal uh, red decks. This is a, a vi- you have to look at goblins as just like, you could make the cards green and white, right? Like it wouldn't matter. Like they're, they're, it doesn't feel like a red deck. It's just a lot of burn or it's just a lot of creatures. Okay. And so like these uh, Jace's aren't going to die. I mean, maybe she'll bring Searing. She's got Searing Blood in the sideboard, but I wouldn't have brought it if I was her. Yeah, that's like a guessing game. Like, I think on the draw, you can uh, usually put your opponent on bringing in the Jaces, and on the play, maybe they ignore them. Um, but uh, th- then again, like, I don't know if you really want to bring in cards like that because it cuts your own synergy. And if she never, or if he doesn't bring it in or never draws one, you're just stuck uh, with this card rod in your hand until the inevitable happens. This is yeah. this is just a rabble. I, I think it's just a rabble master. Let it die uh, situation. I mean, maybe she'll just play the outburst and set up for the next turn. But you have so many. Whenever I have three of the same card and one of a unique card, I always like just play the one that I have three of, so that I have options later in the game. Uh-huh. Because like you never know what your opponent's going to have on this turn. Now, rabble masters are just better to to chain them off of each other. Now. What just happened? Oh yeah, it's pro blue. I was like, like why did he tap first? But yeah, it's pro blue. So <laughs> down goes that, and all right, there's the languish. Wow, that was and a that's, nice draw. Yeah, th- this is going to be tough uh, because Jace is going to flip next turn, uh, then being uh, invulnerable to the languish. Languish is going to happen. So next turn, if Gabby jams on Obelisk. Uh, she has a pretty good chance of just winning this game, huh. and she should. She should just jam on it. Like, oh yeah, Marshall's not even keeping up double blue. Like, he should have bioblighted or kept up double blue, but not, <laughs> but not do both of them because now the obelisk wins the game. So it's like rabble after rabble after rabble. All right, Jace number two is gonna hit the the yard. They're just so hateful twins. <laughs> And Bioblight's going to happen a little too late. And now these Rabble Masters are just going to eat Marshall alive. Even with a Jace. Like, Jace is going to flip tick up. Uh, yeah. Jace I, I, five cards to flip, right? Oh, there's a... I mean, there's a counter, but there's no dragon. See, this is this is why I just dislike Esper Dragons, even though I want to play with it. Like, I don't go to FNM that often, but whenever I go to FNM, I play Control Light because I never get to play them in real tournaments. <laughs> um, and so I like to have fun with them, but then they always frustrate me because of things like this. Like your Counterspell doesn't counter something, your your Wrath doesn't Wrath anything, you have this extra Jace in your hand that's going to not do anything. It's going to play it, but... You can have one of each. Oh, uh, you can have one of each, but like then that one's going to get languished. <laughs> Ooh... I don't think that's the play. I think it's just rabble. Makes sense. But she did she did bring the hill cutters in as instant speed threats, which is which is nice. Like it's not gonna help her her against uh defensive Ojutai, but it'll help her against the uh the Dragon Lord Slumgars. Man. Three three tokens, hasty goblins being spit off by that rabble master. Not yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean it was it was just a uh, a mistake. You hate to see it happen when he didn't bow blight uh, her three lands away. Well, he was setting up for a language. Is it is the bio blight so obvious? You don't know no, but she's you, got an obelisk. That's true, but her deck plays four, and it's her premium spell. So, like, that's the card that you have to be concerned about. But especially with you, you don't you mm-hmm. want to get more for your language than just one hordling outburst? I mean, you can just bobblet the outburst and get two more cards later because you have a Jason play. Okay, that'll buy. Yeah. Well, if you have no answer to an obelisk, you have to you have to fight that obelisk. Like, <laughs> uh, it's so difficult for that card to get in play when uh, she has no resources. But if she has any resources to get into play, and he's not even showing double blue up, like like if you look at how this game's playing out, the the card is just annihilating him. So here will the big decision if she plays around. Uh, Slumgar Scorn or not if I was her I wouldn't you would just go 6th land 2nd Rabble Master 
No, I would play the heel cutter out. Heel cutter. Uh, sure. Yeah. And just keep getting damage in. Like we're in a we're in a tough spot where uh like language still can be a potential blowout and then that Jace flips, but it's nice that, that the second Rebel Master or third Rebel Master is gonna be able to come down and force the Jace down to three. But this is gonna get picked off by Slumber Scorn. And if Marshall's gonna be able to flip and languish and hopefully find something in the next two cards. There is Solgar Scorn. No dragon, but she tapped out for the heel cutter. She agreed with you that it was made sense to do there. Yeah, now you put your opponent down to, like, if she didn't do that, then he just gets to loot away the Slumgar Scorn anyway. And right. so you just kind of want to jam into it. And if you keep, you always want to keep your opponent on low resources. Whoa, okay, yeah. I was making sure that, uh, for a second I thought it wasn't active, but... Uh, yeah, block flip. Ooh, this so he is... only takes three damage there. Now he gets to languish. So down goes Rabble Master and both tokens. Wow, and, that... and the Marshall top decked an ultimate price. He's hard yeah, that... this game. Yeah, that's going to keep that Rabble Master down. Now this Jace, as long as it keeps uh, getting loyalty, it's going to be able to be additional removal spells. So what, what Marshall has access to is probably the next four draw steps of Gabby's. Yeah, she goes Rabble Master. She's going to, I'm sure it's going to die. But now she, she top decked right back, basically. He top decks Ultimate Price to kill the Rabble Master, but she top decked Hordling out first, which is nine power worth of guys. That still, uh, still fall to the Bile Blade in Marshall's graveyard. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. That Jace guy's yeah. pretty good, I guess. Yeah. So if, if Marshall just bricks for the next, like, two turns. Uh, she has a chance, but with Jason play, that's going to be able to con continuously tick up and down and eat his graveyard while trying to find an Ojutai or a dig. And Gabby is forced to draw something for the next three or four turns just to fight uh, the removal that Jace and draw steps are going to cause. So I think this game is going to end up going to Marshall unless uh, he doesn't find a win condition in the next like five turns. Because Jace, Jace has a lot of potential at killing like three to four draw steps in situations like this, but it doesn't win the game. And I've I've been in situations like this with multiple decks, and yeah, playing around Thoughtseize, no point in not just putting it into play. Sure. Hall of Triumph gets things uh, even bigger. Yeah. It actually seems and, kind of relevant with Bile Blight and Languish as Marshall's prime premium removal. Yep, yeah. and and now. Uh, Without the hero's downfall, all right. Well, that kills Jace, which is very good, because <laughs> the Jace is almost uh, the most relevant uh, thing that Marshall could be doing besides an Ojutai. And uh, yeah, I mean, she should kill this Jace. Like the Jace is like three of her threats. Like it's going to uh, tick down and languish something, and then if it gets hmm, okay, oh, she's going upkeep, I guess. Yeah. He's Which got, a, the he's got a counter spell. She's going to make him spend the mana during his upkeep. Yeah, to fade any top decked Ojutai draws. Down goes Jace. The side, Jace is in from the sideboard. It looks pretty good here. Yeah. All right. Well, here's our 4 4 Frown Street Denizen. That's going to eat one of the two removal spells. But she's drawing her worst cards, and he's got to react to with his best cards in, the, in these situations. Which but he has to kill is, every single creature she plays at this point. Yes. They're all plus three, plus three. And now he can block them, though. That helps. Yeah. Silumgar, the Drifting Death. <laughs> oh, now they're plus, Our, plus five. Well, now, he, now, they do, now Slumgar doesn't block. <laughs> uh. She just needs creatures. Yeah, she she has a lot of draws to them. Um, it's funny because I yeah I mean he has to start attacking. Yep. I mean making the game go longer doesn't help Marshall. Valentine invocation is pretty good there. Her best draws are her token generators like that. <laughs> 
Uh, this is going to get Crux, but it, it leaves her open to any fodders or outbursts in future draws, which she has like six now. And Selengar will, of course, survive the Crux of Fate. Or the Languish. Oh, no. Yeah, the Languish, the languish is, is dead now. Yeah. Languish <laughs> That's so is funny. just blank. Yeah. Two BB have no impact on the game. Oh, no, it That's does. It does, because he can... No, he can languish right now and then attack with Salamgar, right? Because uh, they're 5-5s? Five five? Five or are they 6-6s? Six they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6-6s. Six sixes. So, yeah, that doesn't work. All right. Put yeah. two 6-6s six into play. <laughs> what? Two 6-6s? Six <laughs> For two mana. Wizard That's sure knows how insane. to print some cards. This game's awesome. Yeah, Falcon gained some life. <laughs> We've got the combo. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was Marshall here, I would definitely just attack, let take six damage, wait for one more resource from Gabby, and then two for one her. But yeah, for I, I would not. I would not two for one in this situation. It is. Ah, uh, glory will not be chased today. She has to just add it to the board, right? She can't well, of course, like yeah. Drown plus languish. Wow, Marshall's actually going to win this game, isn't he? Uh, it's not over yet. Her top decks are real. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, here he has the option of taking the glory chaser. It's it's difficult to pull the trigger on drown and languish in case like she draws like an outburst. Um, sure. But she only has two left and three fodders uh, and one rabble. Like so, it looks to me like he might pull he the trigger on the double. Turns, though, like he's got her to five now. Yeah, but if he just plays the slumgar and chumps, then she's dead. So right. that's what I mean. I don't think he has all that much to worry about here, is my point. Yeah. Okay, he's not gonna make he's not gonna threaten lethal next turn. But will the following turn. Yeah. I wanted just some gigantic hill cutter to win the game. That's what I was looking for. Just a hill cutter off the top would have dropped him to chump block mode. Then a second, and then he'd have to keep back his uh, drifting death. All right, All well, right. we are on to game three. Yeah, I mean... Sutcliffe got there. He drew a lot of removal, and the Jace looked pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's all this deck is going to be after Cyborg is. Uh, he elected to not have the Thought Seizes, where the games can go long, but I think on the draw, I would like to have some Thought Seizes, because you just need that early interaction. And if you just have a tap land draw, like, you just need some way to uh, interact on that second turn or a goblin deck can get really under you and if you don't have one of your language the game is over but I guess with two drowns uh, he just has so many ways to wrath uh, it's quite interesting because I guess four fall tongues is why he thought and I guess the third language is why he thought she was going to be on obs on aggro because that, that is not normal <laughs> with this deck he definitely thought that she would be on obs on aggro and I guess he said Kenji had been testing a lot of Rally. And what is Kenji playing? Uh, Kenji's not playing Rally. What is Kenji playing? Yeah, I know Marshall got them both wrong. Oh, I didn't I didn't even metagame. I just played one of my favorite decks. Kenji's on White Green Megamorph. He's on the Kibler deck. Oh, uh, okay. All right, so I think it looks to like we have this mulligan with uh, blue-white mana in a blue-black deck. Ooh, blue white, blue white, foul tongue, hero's downfall. Lucky. Is that an opulent palace? It is. The ninth tap land for blue black. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, if she draws a land, she gets obelisk into play right away, and then and then she just runs away with this game. <laughs> followed by swamp. Yeah, followed by two black. black. Yeah. Marshall's running good. Mountain. Ah. Uh. All right. Well, she has to fodder here. And just it's hope there's no sweeper. And hope there's no drown or bile. Yeah. Like you, you can't play goblins passive. 
Sounds right. All right. Drops him to 13. He gets lucky and draws the languish. What? What just happened? Well, Marshall is getting incredibly lucky. That's that's what's happening. True story. So what? I guess what would that be? That'd be ten damage. So theoretically, if she draws a land and plays a hall and he doesn't chump block, then he is dead. Like so what? that's gonna happen. So let's let's hope it's a hall. Don't play that outburst. Can I call her? <laughs> also, up? this is this is uh Oh no, don't tap the foundry, because what about Bioblade? You gotta play around Bioblade. I guess Marshall would have learned his lesson and played around Bioblade. Alright, well Obelisk Avert is in play. Yeah, and this should be game over too. Because there's no way that this Jace is yeah, Jace is just gonna have to run in front of one of these. Discard the downfall. Uh, Languish is gonna come down. And Rabble Master probably follows, dealing three. Hobbelisk of Erd versus the Sorcery Speed Removal. Seems like it's earning its keep, shall we say. Yeah, and there's so many top decks that uh, Gabby has to just like blow this game out. A second dig is going to be worthless. Um, and, yeah, so he's got four and... In the yard, so like, I guess this is this has to be an ultimate price turn, but then foul, then he can foul tongue dig, but that's not enough. So here's a haul. Yeah. I like this. I like the haul. It deals an extra point of damage through the goblin token, and then play the frenzied goblin, and that'll be lethal unless uh, Marshall draws a fetch land or an additional land to. Uh, be able to dig before the the foul tongue. All right, so the goblin ship's over for four. Ultimate price meant Ravel Master doesn't spit off any more tokens, but that one token is doing a lot of good work. Frenzied Goblin, now it's a pair of four fours. Ooh, that's that's Pass good. Passer but can block a four four. No, doesn't work because no gain life means that Frenzied stays in play and right. forces it to not block. Tassiger's not Brock and Frenzy Goblin. That is a true, true story. So yeah, he's so, dead, right? He can, he can yeah, stop Tassiger, but she'll loot, she presumably will hold on to Frenzy Goblin. Yeah, he needed an untapped land so he could dig into uh, a dragon and then Frenzy to stay at three life. Uh, but without access to that, he has no play. Uh, there's not even, a, I guess he could, no, he could he dig has, into land dragon. So that's, that's his play. Dig in a land dragon? Yeah. You would not foul tongue plus Tassiger across your fingers and hope she screws up Frenzy Goblin? I would put some of my opponents on that, but I wouldn't put Gabby on that. I mean, I only make plays like that when I have no other options. Right. And the dig, he has to pay three for dig? Yes. Right? So, yeah, he needs he needs dig, dig to hit land dragon. Um... And then rip a languish and well, probably find sense. some kind of unicorn in his deck. But at this point, he's drawing completely slim. So TikTok, TikTok, concede. <laughs> this, is a, this is actually a really common one. I mean, he needs an untapped land and one of his six dragons. So um, no. Brock's downfall. Ultimate price, but no dragons amongst the All seven right. cards Marshall's looking at. Uh, I didn't even want that information because I just love when I'm playing Magic Online and my opponent's digging and then they just concede with dig on the stack. <laughs> That's just, it's one of my best feelings of Magic. Like, I hate control decks and I only play when I have to. And, uh, like, when they're too good not to play. Sure. And, and, but whenever my opponent's digging, because right when Dig came out, we all thought it was Sphinx's Revelation. You know, every time they dig, you would just put your hands in your head and you're like, oh, this is miserable. I'm going to lose now. And it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> that is the untapped land. See, here he should just foul tongue and say, I misclicked, and so she doesn't get the credit. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even matter. 
has has the additional Heel threat. Cutter. Love it. Heel cutter crippling Marshall's chances at winning the Super League. All right. Marshall's not out of it now. He's still got a chance to get top two, but Gabby with that win, that's big, clearly controls her own destiny at this point. So Gabby Sparks defeats Marshall Sutcliffe. That is match number two. Mm -hmm. You got to go play now. <sighs> I was hoping you didn't say that. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't like my matchup against Sam. It's, it's not good. Well, we certainly enjoyed hearing, hearing you commentate. This was, this was good stuff. Thanks. I mean, I, I got the Bile Blight Obelisk wrong for a while, but eh, it's not that bad. Yeah, it was, I'll give myself a B minus. B minus. I, I'll, I'll give you a little better than that. This was good. Time. <laughs> We're going to take a real quick break. Uh, we're going to let Brad go get ready for his match. We will swap in both Marshall and Gabby. We'll let them <laughs> decompress about their match for all of you guys. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. 